Hey nerds, welcome back to the series where I go through the Amazon Prime Wheel of Time show episode by episode to tell you all the differences between it and the book. Today we're doing episode four, but before we get into it, I just wanna let you know that some of the ways I talk about the characters might slightly spoil who the Dragon Reborn is. So if you are really invested in that storyline and you don't know, wanna know who it is, you might want to click away. Let's get into it. Okay, so Loghain's whole backstory is not scene. So again, like this is just sort of stuff you hear about as other characters are describing it to you, but you never see this. But it has a lot of good details from the stuff that you see. So this is interesting. Obviously, I've said we don't see Weaves of the Power before, but for the show, I see why they did it and how they are physically showing the madness is kind of evocative. Like, I don't love the CGI on it. I don't think it looks great, but the idea of it, like I can get behind. I'm just curious why they're having a green eyes that I be the healer here, especially what happens later in the episode. Like. Why not just have a yellow? I think that would have been a good piece of world building. So Kareem does exist, but she's only in New Spring. She is not in the Eye of the World. New Spring is the prequel that Jordan wrote, I think after Crossroads of Twilight, so later in the series. So that's like an interesting choice. I wonder why they chose someone who already existed. I'm not sure if Loghain had a trial. I, I'm not sure. He was taken to Tarvalon to be gentled because that's a whole scene where in Camelon, that's where Rand first sees Loghain. He's already trapped and shielded, but he's not gentled. But there is precedent later on we hear about there being trials for gentlemen who can channel. So I think that's like a good setup. Yeah, they're, it's setting up good politics of the White Tower. I kind of like these scenes. But I, I should say uh, none of the scenes in this camp happen because this didn't happen, but it is reminiscent of a little bit of a camping scene with a bunch of Aes Sedai that actually happens at the Great Hunt, which is book two, if I'm remembering right. But Rand and Matt and a lot of the other characters are here. So it's just it's happening a lot earlier, but I understand. I think it's good. It's good setup. I know this is a little thing, but the way they're shielding just isn't at all how it's described in the book. The times we see people shielded, they talk more about it being something that's like slammed into place. I always imagine it kind of like a wall barrier that's between you and the source. So that's sort of interesting that they kind of did it more as like a blanket shield. Technically, this isn't a difference, but I just have to talk about how much I love this scene of Egwene in Tinker Clothes and Perrin is not. It's so good about setting up how they are in the book with Tuanthuan, and so just really great here. I will say one thing that I've been waiting for is for Egwene to take out her braid. That is a part of the book. Like, she's the first one to take out her braid, and it happens actually very early on when she's with Moraine, and she's embarrassed when Nynaeve sees her that way, but she's kind of the most ready to move on from Edmondsfield. And so I'm just kind of bummed that she still has her braid in. Uh, also, the Tinkers weren't going east to Tarvalon, if I remember correctly. Matt should be the distrustful one in this scene, not Rand. I feel like this is kind of a weird choice because throughout the book, Rand is the more trustful one. This farm scene, again, it doesn't happen like this in the book, but it's a really great representation of many of the scenes kind of rolled into one. They visit many farms, they visit many taverns. So I'm really glad that they included this. It's good. Leandrin would have never talked to Nynaeve here. Like she's crazy standoffish in the books. She looks down on everybody. She's super arrogant doesn't want to give anybody the time of day. And honestly, we don't really meet Leander in book one. She's way more of a book two character. I think it was smart for them to move it up. I also will say they're kind of making her more of a real person. I'm actually a fan of this kind of change. I don't want to say anything more to kind of give away spoilers, but she just feels a little bit more fully realized here. And I, I actually like that. Matt never pukes as far as I remember in the book. He is getting sick, but it's in a different way. It's more like he's losing a lot of weight and he's looking like they say very like kind of skeletal and wan and very just like washed out. I think that might have been a little hard to show in the show, so I kind of understand what they're doing here. Oh my gosh, this doesn't happen in the show, but her doll's name is Brigitte. Okay, but I love this. This is like such a good little thing for the people who love the books. She wants to see the world. Okay, I love this scene. So yes, Tom's nephew was a channeler, um, and he does talk about why he feels so protective of Rand and Matt is because his nephew was a channeler and he met a really bad end and he's kind of blames the Aes Sedai and Tarvalon for that but it isn't connected to Matt being a channeler. Like he doesn't think that about Matt just because Matt's getting sick. That's like not something that's connected. Also, I just am really bummed that Rand's not sick. That's all I'm gonna say. So again, none of these scenes happen. The Lamorain scene doesn't happen. I just have to say, but I really love it. I do think it is a great condensing, like of their relationship. It's a great show of their relationship, but yeah, it doesn't happen. Not a difference, but the Tuathaon scenes are just really great. They're really great. Again, not how the dreams are, but it's good representation of the dreams. I wish we'd seen Egwene dreaming a little bit more. I wish I wish we would see that. Okay, I don't know if the show is trying to say the fate or Matt killed those people. I think it's supposed to be up in the air. So I'm gonna be very interested to see how that all shakes out. I think you're supposed to wonder. I will say Matt never killed anyone in the books. And I hope it's just a mystery that we don't know because I'll be upset if Matt is supposed to have killed those people but I'll reserve judgment. Okay, so am I seeing this part right? It's like, it's just so dark, but did they already lose Tom? So Tom does get lost in the books, fighting a fade actually. He fights a fade and tells Rand and Matt to run and he saves their lives. It's actually at a place called Whitebridge though, not a random farm, and he saves their lives. It's a great scene. If it's happening here, I love that they're including it. I just don't 
like, does anyone care about Tom if you haven't read the books yet? I don't feel like he's an important enough character. So I feel like this actually makes this choice weird to introduce him and then get rid of him an episode later. So I'm gonna be curious to see what happens. Again, I know none of these scenes exist, but the way they're showing the politics of the White Tower is just really great. And it's dead on. I know you're gonna be saying this, but none of the Lan Nynaeve scenes, they all don't happen. There's never actually a scene, I think in the book, where they're alone until the very end. I do like these inclusions a lot. I will have to say that. I think it's a very good choice. I don't think she ever actually speaks in the old tongue though. And this isn't her backstory. We've already covered that. It's not her backstory. But I love that Lon talks about the meaning of those words and the Battle of Manatherin because that is talked about in the book. It's just earlier on. So I do really like that they included this scene. This warder is not upset enough that his Aes Sedai is being killed. That's, that just wouldn't happen in the book this way. He needs to be way more upset. No one gets injured. Again, none of these scenes exist, so I guess you can kind of presume that. Okay, Nynaeve healing land. I called that this was gonna happen, I just knew it. In the books, Nynaeve can already know she can channel at this point, like when she's with Moraine and Lan. She hasn't realized she's been channeling her entire life, but we find out that, or Moraine tells her that her break point, or when she really started channeling, was probably when she tried to save Egwene way earlier in their life. Like it's something she wanted really, really bad, and she accidentally channeled and cured Egwene and then became sick after. So Moraine tells her this when they meet up actually after Shadar Lagoth. For the show, I understand the change. I get it. It's so much more dramatic to see Nynaeve do this on screen. And it's so much more shocking and it's so much more exciting. So I understand the change. I'm a little bummed. I think the story is sweeter with Nynaeve trying to save Egwene. Like I I like the idea of the childhood friend, like that's who she cared about enough. Like she doesn't really know Lon. Like I, they barely been together. So the fact that he's the one who kind of gets her to break, I just feel like, isn't as good of a story, but I get it for the show. I can't fault them. I don't know how to feel about Moraine being included in this gentling. It feels a little out of character to me. Okay, like this warder should be going mad trying to kill Loghain. Like Loghain killed his Aes Sedai, he should be going crazy. Like in the books, if your Aes Sedai that you are bonded to dies, you go literally insane. You cannot stop until you get revenge. It is, you aren't the same person. So I feel like that is weird that they tempered that down. Okay, so that was episode four, all the differences. Overall, I'm gonna be honest, I really liked this episode. There were changes, but I think we're finally seeing how all these changes that were a little upsetting up front are coming together to actually be pretty true to the book. I know there were changes in episode four. I obviously listed a bunch of them, but I'm really enjoying them. I was really skeptical at first of including Loghain's backstory. I thought, why are you including this when there's already so much content? Like, why are you putting this? But now I'm seeing it come together and I see that they're leveraging Loghain's backstory to teach us about the politics of the White Tower, to set up some very important characters that will happen later, to set up some very important relationships. And they're using it as a device to do a lot of exposition and get a lot of world building out. And so I'm actually very impressed at how they're using that and I'm very on board for it. I even think showing Loghain and his backstory is helping keep their mystery alive of who the dragon is in a better way than they've done in the past. Because now we can kind of learn more about the world through this you know, Loghain figure rather than uh, who we'd normally be finding out with, who's uh, the real dragon that you actually do know at this point in the book, but not in the show. The only uh, changes that I'm really feeling dubious about are Matt. I'm just really nervous where they're going with that. I'm not gonna pass judgment because we don't know where they're going with it, but I just really hope they do Matt right. I also feel like a little bummed, like I said, about the Nynaeve and Lan with her healing scene, but it is such an important part of her character. I understand why we're seeing it on screen and I can't fault them for that. So I'd love to know what you thought of this episode. Despite the differences, I'm actually really enjoying it and it's making me even more excited. I think it was the best episode yet and it felt the most true to the books yet. So I am super excited. Let me know what you guys think. If you want more Wheel of Time content, especially to see my episode by episode recaps where I talk about the differences, please like and subscribe. And you can also check me out on Instagram at bookborn.reviews if you want to see what I'm currently reading or other nerdy rants. I'll see you next time. Bye.